Ellen, as uh, AirVenture 2013 winds to a close, it's time to get caught up with our, our favorite projects, the ones that we think will have an effect, quite an effect down the line. And yeah, we could get into all that, you know, company building, financial stuff, but what I really want to know about is airplanes. What's happening with the airplane, for, for God's sakes? Tell me. Uh, you're right, we should get into all the company stuff as well, but the, the coolest part, the substance, the reason for all of this is airplanes and customers. You know, what, what will the product do for the customer? How do, how do you get it done? The airplane's great. I, I continue to be ever more excited about what this airplane will be therefore what it will be for other people, sort of the definition of a market. And the engineering team that's working on it, we've got about 110 people working on the project, and when I get to spend more time on the airplane, it just is fantastic, very cool stuff. What are you learning? <laughs> I assume you still mean on the airplane, because <laughs> there's other things I keep learning to my frustration. Um, probably the one of the interesting things uh, that, that the kind of the aviation audience would get out of this is that as you'd expect with every design there's a series of design compromises whether it's how you're fitting structure in or systems in or performance high speed versus low speed what we're learning is that the compromises this time are working out very positively you need space for a system we've got space for the system you need to do something about the high speed it doesn't mess up the low speed so all of those kind of typical compromises that are just a natural part of design an airplane have happy endings or at least so far we have happy endings on them so we're really pleased with the progress what kind of kestrel is developing now in contrast to the kestrel that you started with when you entered into this project the first thing i would say is that when we started the project, we knew we were going to be making changes. So let's say we're, we're very much on that path of what we expected. The original Farnborough aircraft project, they made a lot of progress, flying prototype, a lot of detailed design, a lot of good aerodynamic work. But from the very beginning, those of us that are circumfer circumferally, whatever the word, those of us are too big around the, the waist. Anyway, we knew we had to make the airplane wider. We had to make it more comfortable. Knowing that change, from the very beginning we started making the changes and dealing with the consequences of those changes. Next thing was handling qualities. I want lighter ailerons. I love to fly. I want an airplane that people love to fly. Now, naturally, we still spend most of the time on autopilot going someplace because it's a transportation machine. But when the autopilot's off, it's got to be fun. It's got to put that smile on your face. So there were those changes. We also think that one of the differentiating characteristics of the airplane is the ability to go in and out of short runways. So it's flap systems and bigger flap systems. So smaller ailerons, which means spoilers, and, and the things that are necessary to change to get what we think is important. The twin-engine Oracle CRN 2120 offers a robust feature list, including a fully redundant dual-screen display not offered with other engine monitoring systems. STC primary, the Oracle, will soon be available in fixed-wing turbine and rotorcraft versions. What's going to distinguish this airplane from all the others that are currently in the field? Well, the, the factors that we think are critical will first be what gets them to a turboprop, a single-engine turboprop, and then what differentiates ours. The things that most turboprops have in common is the ability to carry a bigger payload and it's not because of any sort of mystery it's because the propeller accelerates more air so you can get heavier weights off the ground and you can get them back into shorter runways because you can use it to decelerate so that's kind of the first of those characteristics we look at that and say if that's the differentiating characteristic for the segment then we want to use that and accentuate that as a differentiating characteristic for us clearly one of the things that will appeal to people about our airplane is big tires, robust structure, ability to go in and out of short runways, large flap system, good controllability. So another reason that people buy single engine turboprops is because they have good load carrying capability, which means space to put things in. We think that the differentiating characteristic of ours is that we have lots of space for the number of seats and big windows and comfort. And so they'll, when they sit in, they'll go, yeah, I, I like the feel of this. Now, having said that, it's obviously very subjective. Just look at the range of automobiles and trucks that people buy. So there will be a segment that appeals to it. The last thing that I expect that we will achieve is that what people will see is sort of a signature that this group that we have believes 
that airplanes should be easier to operate. Mm -hmm. And I want everybody that flies in this airplane to go away saying, I can do that. You know, this is easy to operate. It's predictable. It, it doesn't require skills that are either hard to attain or, from a safety point of view, more importantly, hard to maintain. And, and I want that to be the overwhelming response. I can do this. Let's talk about the choice of garment for the panel. Obviously, there's the 600-pound gorilla, but how much of a fight was this for the winner for this panel space? The avionics are essential to the characteristic of the airplane that we were just talking about, that ease of operation. The G3000 adds a number of really important steps to that with this touchscreen interface that should make it much more intuitive and much more customizable as we go forward and as we have new features. For us, the G3000 isn't just the display as avionics, it's electronic circuit breakers, it controls the air conditioning and the heating systems, it's very integrated into the whole airplane. From a competitive point of view, the choice of Garmin being first, I think I would be correct in saying would be what most people would say was obvious or at least predictable. I didn't think of it that way. I thought of it, you know, there's a lot of choices. We want people to, to think about this. We want Garmin to spend a lot of time thinking about it. But yes, the obvious solution was the first solution. Having said that, we, you know, we, we want to keep pushing Garmin with competition. Uh, they've obviously demonstrated they can do great things when they try, and we want them to keep trying. There are more great things that this industry ought to try and achieve, whether it's avionics or airplanes or propulsion. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Well, with propulsion, avionics, and most of the critical aspects of the airplane very much fleshed out and public now, what kind of reception are you getting from the folks that have either decided to buy this airplane or on the bubble? To all these decision paths appear to have been correct. So the first part about that that I always want to make clear is that you can't order one yet. So we don't know who's decided to buy one because there's no piece of paper they can sign. They can't give us a deposit. They can't you know, it's, we're, we're just not doing that. Having said that, we believe that there's a very large demand for this airplane. I think, as, as I've said for years, I think we will grow this category by the, including this airplane in. Having said that, I, I can also still understand why all of the existing designs people will continue to buy. There's a compelling answer that depends upon your needs. It would say, that's the right product for me. But, but we'll get a whole bunch of those. It, but as I said earlier, it's been fun to watch some of those people who would have said prior to this, well, I'm never going to buy a single-engine turboprop. And then they come and get in this and talk about it and think about it, and then you can see that light bulb coming on. You know, it's not on-off switch, it's rheostat. Final question. An airplane is only as good as the company backing it up both from the standpoint of their expertise, as well as their ethos, as well as the spirit they bring to what they try to create. Are you building the right team at Kestrel? I think we're building the right team. And I agree with you completely about all of those factors, that life really is about integrity. And that is integrity in the design. It's integrity in the process. It's integrity in the culture. It's all of these things. It's difficult. You know, one of the things I often say is it's easy to do the right thing when it's easy to do the right thing. The question is, do you do the right thing when it's hard to do the right thing? And a lot of times, you know, that really is as narrowly defined as an engineering decision or as broadly as what do we think we're going to be when we grow up. Great answer. But one of the things, though, that I don't think the industry really realizes is that, to a certain extent, the customers that buy these airplanes don't just buy airplanes. They buy relationships. They want to know that the company actually thinks of them as something more than a number or a checkbook or things of that nature. It's a lesson that's not learned too well in GA lately. No, but, but it's really it's not a GA-specific problem. It's a U.S. business, uh, world economy, world business problem. And as we go towards metrics and balance sheets and it's only about the money, 
we forget the basic lesson, which is that you only get money, cash, when you deliver value. And that, that value part requires a relationship with the customer. What, what is good for them? And just as importantly, what's bad for them? You know, don't do that. You know, there's, you know, don't, don't sell them the wrong airplane. If somebody comes in and says, I love this Kestrel, it's fantastic, but what, what I'm really looking forward to is doing aerobatics and landing on lakes. And you're going, well, yeah. we, we don't do that. <laughs> Alan, thanks so much and good luck. I appreciate it. Thanks very much.